Hello, hello. Welcome back to the Purpose, Profits, and Pixie Dust podcast. I'm Lindsay Dollinger. I am so excited to be here with you today. This is the podcast that accelerates success for female online entrepreneurs. And today we're diving into the exciting world of scaling your business, how to elevate and take your business to the next level. Before we dive into the topic, I want to address the name change because I am so excited for this. Um, it is something that I have been thinking about doing for a really long time. And um, it probably came up, honestly, at PodFest. I got to th think of the right name of the conference at PodFest in January that I attended. It was awesome. I'm going to be there next year. So if you're a podcaster or even if you're not a podcaster, but you're a creator who does any sort of video or audio work, it's a great conference to go to. Um, but anyway, when I was there, I kept hearing about making sure the title of your podcast was very clear to the type of person that you wanted to attract and purpose and pixie dust could be for people who don't have an online business, right? If you want more fun and you want to connect your purpose in life, which we do talk about on the show, but I wanted to make it really, really clear that also this was for women entrepreneurs. The show is for women entrepreneurs because when we make more money, we can make an even bigger impact on the world, right? Nothing bad happens when women have more money. Can we get an amen to that? So that's where the name change came from. I wanted to very much keep purpose in it because that's behind everything that I do. And I think that's behind any good entrepreneur. And then I also really wanted to keep the pixie dust because it's all about the fun, the Disney magic. And I think that's something that really sets me apart as a brand. And so I had to get a little creative <laughs> with how I could combine those. Um, and so the name change actually came up right before I started the membership that I opened up. So the Purpose, Profits, and Pixie Dust CEO Society. And in the mastermind I'm in with the coaches that I work with, they are also in the, the process, and I think they've already done it now, but of renaming their programs and everything so that it's very aligned and very um, similar across the board. So I like that style. I think it makes it very good for brand awareness. And so anyway, long story short, Welcome to the up level of the podcast. <laughs> so you won't see um, necessarily much changes content wise because we've been talking about entrepreneurship this entire time on the show. But again, I wanted to make it really clear for people because I have had people think that it is just a Disney podcast talking about the theme parks and, you know, traveling and, and things like that, which we do from time to time, but not very much like this is, you know, the show for the woman entrepreneur who wants the productivity, who wants the systems wants to build a business of their life and their dreams to be able to live their life of their dreams. So anyway, I hope you're excited with me about the podcast name change, cover art change, just like all the up leveling in this season. Um, that's where we're at right now. And I'm pumped. So I hope you're pumped too. Speaking of up leveling an invite for you again, before we dive in, if you're really ready to take your business to the next level, whatever that looks like for you, and that's your goal, then you're gonna to wanna to get a free ticket to my Confident and Ambitious CEO Virtual Retreat Week that is happening July 15th through the 18th. There are prizes, there's giveaways, yes, there will be replays, I know people are gonna ask, but most importantly, you're gonna be learning and building a community with other badass women who have big ambitions. So if you want in, link is in the show notes, or you can always head anytime, guys, any link that I mention, lindsaydellinger.com forward slash links, you will find it there. Uh, so get signed up. Like I said, there are um, giveaways and prizes for sharing the event and just saying you're going, for doing homework, for showing up live. Just really, I am stepping into this season of abundance because it's everywhere. Um, I am healing from my leg injury. And as I've been going through this healing process and just really tapping into gratitude because there's been some days and weeks to be completely honest and months to be completely honest that have felt really, really dark and heavy. And I'm on the other side of that, or at least I hope I'm on the other side of that. And I just want to give. So it's on my heart to give this virtual retreat. I have in the, on the sign up page and in the emails that you're going to get when you sign up, treat it like it's something that you, you are paying a thousand dollars to attend and really go all in with that mentality and I guarantee you're going to see amazing results. So I'm super excited for it. There is some Disney um, fun theming in it. And I'll, I'll leave the rest there for you. I did make the times um, 
some evening times and some daytime times because uh, the content is different each day, but I wanted to be able to hit people hopefully at times that were convenient for them. So either your lunch hour or after work if you still have um, you know, your full-time job. But anyway, I hope to see you in and I hope you invite a friend to join. So let's dive into the episode. First, let's talk about scaling and what that really means. So to me, scaling is not just about growth. It's about sustainable and strategic growth. It's about expanding your reach, increasing your revenue, and then doing it without burning out while still having fun in your business. Because um, I was talking to someone, I can't even remember who now, to be completely honest, because <laughs> I've been doing interviews with people left and right. But you know, if our businesses aren't fun, and it, I'm not naive to believe that your business is going to be fun every single day of the week but if you're not having fun doing what it is that you love doing like what's it all for to be honest right so i want you to keep that in mind when you're thinking about the strategies on how you should grow so in today's episode i'm going to share strategies for scaling your business um, and provide some expert tips to help you on that journey and then at the end i have a special announcement about an opportunity that can provide you with tools and support you need to make scaling your business a reality so let's get started so first, I get asked all the time. This is probably like my top question I get asked. I get asked on all the podcasts that I'm on, just from people in general, but how I'm able to juggle running essentially a full-time business while also being a full-time teacher, while also traveling, while also being a dog mom to an extremely needy dog. <laughs> and I won't lie, it's not easy. It takes dedication. It takes a lot of discipline, which is something that I find even if you have dedication, sometimes you don't have the discipline piece. Discipline is definitely something that I think is taught um, and is learned. And then it also takes a lot of strategy, which is also taught and learned. So not being productive, it isn't and it hasn't been an option for me because when it is an option for me, I don't get done the things that I wanna get done. There's just enough, not enough hours in a day, right? So that's why I got so good at being productive. And productive and be productivity essentially is something that can be taught and it can be learned and it's, it's a skill and it's something that can become a habit. And it's something that does take a lot of work. So when I discovered automation and delegation and that anyone could do it, even me, that was a game changer for me. So let me give you some examples of what I mean by that. First of all, the website platform I use, if you are follow the show, I talk about it from time to time, I use Kajabi. Other platforms you know, have popped up that, that mimic Kajabi or do a lot of the same things, but I haven't found one that works as nicely, is so professional, has amazing help. But essentially what Kajabi is, is it's everything that I need in one place for my business. And it's allowed me plenty of space to grow and expand my business. So I've been hooked ever since I started using it. So I have my website there. Uh, my email platform is on there. My products are on there. There's a place you can do a community. So if I want to move my membership over and I might someday onto Kajabi to have it off of Facebook, that's on there. My courses, literally everything is on there. But the best part of this, and this is where like the automation comes in, is they have templates. <laughs> Raise your hand if you like a good template. So templates for your different web pages. So and it even breaks it down, like a template for a sales page, a template for a home page, a template for a links page, a template for introducing a course. Like literally so many templates. You can also buy templates. We're gonna talk about that later, but templates for your website, templates for emails. And again, it'll say um, like a newsletter template. Uh, introducing a freebie template just so many things so even if you don't want to buy those from somewhere else you can get the idea and it'll tell you like put a catchy testimonial here put blah 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 here so that's what I mean by template they're freaking awesome and then it's just like plug and play so you don't need to know code for it it's super user-friendly so win-win <laughs> for me because I don't want to spend time on the tech and almost all the business owners that I looked up to and aspired to be like used and still use Kajabi to this day. So I knew it was a good choice. So it came highly recommended. Um, and I have a 30 day free trial link for you. It's in the show notes. It's also on my website under my free resources. So if you want to check it out for 30 days, give it a, you know, check it out. They run specials all the time too. Um, so head to the show notes and get that if you want to see what I'm talking about and have you know 30 days to play around with what your business could look like in there. Um, and I'm gonna talk more about that a little bit later, but that's just one example of both automation and delegation, honestly, for me in one place. And it was something that was really simple and it made, it made sense for me. 
Okay, so let's dive into some expert tips for scaling your business. So tip number one, focus on your core strengths. Outsource tasks that don't play into your strengths to free up your time for strategic planning and growth activities. This takes a lot of self-awareness, which I talk about a lot on this show. So much with entrepreneurship, I find, takes that self-awareness piece. So ask yourself, you know, what really lights you up? What are you good at? And this can be a hard one to swallow, like listing things that you are not good at, but just admit to them, girlfriend, admit to them, because it saves so much time if you do that. If it lights you up to create content, maybe don't outsource that, or maybe don't outsource all of it. I'm going to be honest. I just outsourced some of my content creation, and I love content creation. However, I have found that when I I pour all my energy into content creation, then I don't have enough energy to pour into creating like my actual products or my deliverables for my membership. So that's just one example. So because I know that about myself, and obviously I'm going to give it to the people who are paying me money versus, you know, the people on the internet who are not paying me money yet, I decided to outsource part of my social media, not all of it. Obviously the stuff with like me with reels, with stories, things like that, I can't outsource. Um, only three posts a week, but I'm, I'm starting with that. I'm starting with that right now before I know I need it. And this is key before you know you need it, because once you have realized that you actually need it, you're already like 10 steps behind where you could be. So like getting to that realization before you actually need it is a, is one of my biggest tips for you. Now let's talk a little bit about templates. Cause I started talking about that with Kajabi. Maybe email marketing overwhelms you. You could outsource it. There's a couple ways to outsource it. You could actually have people write emails for you. Totally an option. I have done that in the past. Um, usually when people do that, especially if they don't know me and my business super well, they end up sounding obviously not like me. So I have to go in and tweak them all anyway. And then it's almost not even worth it. One thing though, that I have found that I really like doing with, um, or I did really like, I haven't done it in a while, but is using email marketing templates. You can get these on a website like Kajabi. If you're a Kajabi user, they have tons of templates there for you. Um, you can also use chat GPT. I've used some chat GPT templates before in the past that have been really good, but I've also bought them. <laughs> I've bought them from a couple different content creators that I follow who specialize in email marketing. Um, I know there's someone, uh, what's her name? Liz Wilcox, who has an email marketing membership. It's, I think it's $7 a month. I'm not personally in it, but I know I have friends who are and they rave about it. So, you know, just keep your eyes open start maybe following some of these creators who specialize in the thing that you're not good at and see what sort of offers that they have. A lot of them do sell things like templates, whether it is for email marketing, whether it's for content creation, posts on social, gosh, I don't know. You can get them for like podcast outlines, like any sorts of things. There's just so many resources for us as entrepreneurs these days. So take advantage of how easy and low cost getting help can be. As I mentioned, I've bought social media posts and templates and Canva templates before. Um, I forget the name. This is so bad. I always forget. I have the worst memory ever, but there is a company social. Um, I'm not going to remember. I'll drop it in the show notes, but I use them probably for a year. They're awesome. It's a woman owned company and you can either buy the templates and posts or they have a service that auto schedules their templates and posts for you and you just go in it connects to canva so you can change it to your brand colors and things like that basically you tell them what industry that you are in and they make posts but you can go in and like tweak them ahead of time in the scheduler it was awesome so for someone who you're running really short on time or you're like i have no idea what i'm doing that can be a really great way to get some support for i think it was when i did it like 99 dollars a month it was like the best 99 dollars for me at the time, because it allowed me to show up consistently to still, um, you know, grow my presence and my audience and make it look like I was a business that had my ish together, even if I actually didn't. Um, and it allowed me that time to, you know, really pour into learning social media so that I could do it myself later after that. Also, another thing that I have done, and I mentioned this back when I talked about Kajabi, I've bought website templates for my website. Most recently, well, actually, no, not most recently. I'll tell you about that one in a minute. But I bought a pack, a website design pack for the summit that I had in February, the Love Your Business Summit. 
I had started to do the pages by myself and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so overwhelming. I have to make a page for each day. I have to make a speaker page, a sign up page, a thank you page, a page expired, a VIP page. It was like eight, eight or nine pages. And um, as I was starting to do this, I'm like, you know what? Because I was in the thick of the school year. I think I started working on the website maybe in October. Anyway, I found some templates on Etsy. Etsy is another great place to look for templates for things. And I downloaded them, tweaked them for my brand. It was literally, I could have spent hours doing it myself, yes. It was the best money I spent. It was a few hundred dollars. Man, it was so good. And plus, since I got them on Etsy, they had like a coupon deal at the time. So I actually think I got them for like half off. Time is money. <laughs> so figure out your budget, get scrappy on what you can. Maybe you can swap um, services for people as well you know if you need some I don't know you need some graphics made and a friend of yours needs copy maybe you can write emails for her and she can do graphics for you I don't know you, you can figure it out right that's one of our our strengths as entrepreneurs is figuring things out figure things out and also know your strengths know your weaknesses so like that's when I knew like hey I'm gonna drop a few hundred dollars on these website templates this is not something that I want to do right now um, and they were tried and true. They had beautiful instructions. It literally, it was like, it was amazing. It was gold. Um, then I also bought new website pages for my entire Kajabi website. So I have been very slowly rebranding and moving everything over. So like my homepage is updated, my links page is updated. Um, but again, you know, that saves me, I forget how much I spent for it, but Gosh, it was probably cost 10% of what it would cost me to hire a professional website designer, if that. So if there is something like that, like a website rebrand or design, um, and it doesn't need to be done, you know, right now, and it's something that you can slowly work on when you have that time built in your schedule, I don't want it to take the place of your income producing activities definitely not but like the summer for me is a great time to work on my website right or if I just need a little creativity break then maybe I'll do it for a half an hour but making sure that you are disciplined enough to only do it for the half an hour and then spend your other work time on building your business that's how you're going to scale your business my friend all right tip number two ties in very closely with tip number one invest in automation we already talked about that a little bit, um, but automation tools, these can help you streamline your operations, improve efficiency, and allow you to handle increased demand without overwhelming yourself. So some tools that I use to help me automate. Currently, I use StreamYard for videos. I am playing around with Riverside. This is what I am currently recording on. I'm also going to do a trial of Ecamm. Those are two competitors to StreamYard that are very, very close. My friends use both of those. So I just want to, since my StreamYard is getting ready to renew, uh, try them out. You know, I always want to make sure I'm open-minded to things. I've used StreamYard forever. I'm very comfortable with it, but I want to see if there's something else that can help me up-level my business and maybe even save me a little bit of money. But find some sort of a video platform, Riverside, Ecamm, StreamYard, that helps you automate things. So what I mean by automation is I can go in and I can set up podcast interviews with guests and it will you know pull up a link for me I can have all my branding saved all my preferences saved my destination saved and then I can stream to multiple places at one time that has always been key for me um, another thing that I use I currently use Descript but I have noticed that I believe Riverside and maybe Ecamm as well kind of have these capabilities built in so if I do switch to one of those I don't need Descript but I have Descript for podcast and video editing for transcripts and the thing that I really love about Descript is I can go in and I can you can pull up the text transcript and use that to edit versus like listening back through and cutting pieces out so what that could look like is you can just click a button and it removes all the filler words. So all the words um, like stuff like that, it will just remove them with like one click of a button. Talk about automation, it's freaking awesome. It will also pull out clips to use for reels that are really important. It will pull out top quotes to use. It's just awesome, an awesome service. So find something like that if you are doing video podcast recording. Repurpose.io, I just started using this. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out how to learn it all, but the thing that I really love about Repurpose.io that is automated is I created a workflow to download my Reels and TikToks 
to a Google Drive folder so, and it removes the watermark and then I can click a button and reschedule them to other platforms, YouTube, Pinterest, TikTok, Instagram. So if I make it on Instagram, it will download, remove the watermark, save the music, everything, and it's in my Google Drive, which is also great in case something ever happens to my TikTok or my Instagram, everything is just automatically saved. Then I can click a button and schedule that for tomorrow, next week, in a year, to whatever platform I want. Also, Facebook is included on that. So that's what I'm talking about automation. Like what sort of um, workflows can we get set up in software to really save us time? The last one I wanna mention, and this is one that I haven't personally used, but again, I have a lot of friends who use it, is Zapier. So within Zapier, you can create zaps to connect different platforms um, to do different things that don't normally read. So what I mean by that is, um, for example, I have some products on Square just because I'm running out of products on <laughs> Kajabi. So I have a product on Square. For example, it's my Trello business blueprint board. It's like $7, I think, is what I charge for it. So I have the link on Square, Square, the not Square, so Square Up, which is a processor. So I can set up a zap that when someone buys my product on Square, it adds a tag that is called Trello Business Blueprint on Kajabi. And then that person is subscribed to my emails or they get the email confirmation sent to them immediately. It's just really cool. So you'll have to play around with that, especially if you have multiple softwares. You're not using an all-in-one platform like Kajabi with everything on it. That way you can start to integrate things and it saves you steps from having to do it. Because when we have to do things all the time, stuff you know falls through the cracks and then, you know, that's never good. <laughs> so you can also use the tools and programs you already have as well. So in Canva, for example, and you, you probably already know this, but you can click a button to resize your graphics so they're optimized to the right size for that platform, whatever platform you want. You can also schedule them directly from there to Pinterest, Instagram, LinkedIn, all the places. Though I use Meta Business Suite just because I like like the layout a little bit more, but you can schedule stuff directly in Canva. So you never have to leave Canva if you don't want to. So if that saves you time and that works for your brain, use those automations that are already in place for you. Okay. And tip number three to help you scale your business this year is build a strong team around you of support. You know, surround yourself with people who share your vision, who can help you get your business to the next level and move your business forward. So for me, my mastermind has been that really big piece of support. I'm in a mastermind, but I also run one because I know how much your life and business can change in a mastermind. Like all of these tools that I have shared with you about, 90% of them have come from members of masterminds that I've been in. You know, they share like, this is what's working for me. This is what's not working for me. Or if I possibly came to a call and said, you know, I'm really struggling with overwhelm because I feel like I have to create content all the time someone might be like, hey, have you tried repurpose.io? Girl, why are you not on it? And I'm like, well, what is that? So these are the sort of conversations. I guess that's probably a more um, like surface level conversation, but you know, we have conversations like, what should I be doing with my life? <laughs> Where is my business going? Where, you know, what are the missing pieces of my business? Why am I not getting there? What do I need to change with my mindset? How can I change my mindset? What does it look like to change your mindset? What is money mindset? You know. There's so many components that can be talked about and really integrated into a mastermind. That plus the community of people that are in it, you need those people around you. Otherwise, entrepreneurship is so lonely. <laughs> it's so lonely. You know, I don't expect your friends and family to get it because they're not necessarily in this realm. Now, if they're in this realm, they're going to get it. But if they're not, they're probably not going to get it. And it's unfair of us to expect that of them. I have learned, I've learned the hard way. It's unfair of us to expect that they're gonna get it, that they're going to really understand this dream, this deep driving desire, I try to say that three times fast, but this deep driving desire in you to create the impact you wanna create. It's not in everyone. <laughs> That's why not everyone is an entrepreneur. So, you know, find those people who really believe in you, believe in what you're all about, who understand what you're going through, who understand that not every day is perfect in your business and are there to support you and cheer you on. And that, that's what a mastermind for me does. So get those people on board um, and, and find them in whatever way you can. 
So before we wrap up, I'm super excited to share that this month is the month that the Confident and Ambitious Mastermind opens back up for the second cohort, cohort the second nine month round. And we're getting started officially um, mid-August, but signups are going to be open mid-July. So make sure you get on the wait list. Um, the wait list is going to make sure that you get the doors open to you first, so you get the opportunity to grab a spot before everyone else. Um, and yeah, I'm just, I'm just super excited because if you listen to last week's podcast, I kind of wrapped up a little bit of you know, my feelings at the end of the mastermind and how amazing it was, what great transformations we had, what a tight knit community we built. There were definitely tears to be had. Um, but this mastermind is designed for entrepreneurs who are really ready, ready to elevate their business to the next level. So like I said, doors officially open July 19th. Spots are limited. So if you're ready to invest in your success, make sure you get on the wait list, lindsaydollinger.com forward slash mastermind. But as always, you know, that's going to be in the show notes. So Thank you for tuning into this episode of the Purpose Profits and Pixie Dust podcast. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a review, and until next time, keep believing in your magic. Bye-bye, friend.